I thought my life was like a Disney fairy tale, but it was more like a grim tale. I'm sorry ahead of time, this is long. Had my first love in high school for three years, let's call him Brad. At age 17, I joined the service and left, after asking his parents for permission to come with me and getting a no. Every day, we live our own lives as adults. I am leaving the military. He finds a box full of letters and other things that remind him of our time together while helping his mom put in an extractor. The way he found me on social media was hard for him to remember, because my last name sounds different when written down. We get back in touch and start talking again, and all the old feelings come back after more than 20 years. Despite living in different states, we decided to give it a try. We moved pretty quickly, but given our age and experience, I didn't think it was forced or quick in any way. When it happened, it felt right and normal. Three months from now, we'll be married. I decided to move to his state after eight months because my schedule is more open, and he has a teenage daughter. The eleventh month is when we get married. It feels great everywhere. Every person we tell the story to is amazed, and says what a beautiful love story it is. What a perfect match we were blah blah blah. After less than two months of marriage, I knew something wasn't right. Something wasn't right because he was always on his phone and hush hush. In a bar one night, he gives me his phone to hold while he mixes drinks. I went outside a few times during the night to spalt. It happened that I bumped my pocket and felt something. I forgot all about having his phone. Something yelled at me to look. I did what he said because I always showed him the same thing and he had looked through my phone before and found nothing. I surprised myself and find the text to a woman we'll call Stacy. It made my stomach drop. He messaged her in secret while I was getting ready for bed in the shower. Was going to work with her coffee. Ready to meet up for drinks. All the normal mean things. I looked into it more and saw that he follows her on Facebook and Instagram. He is putting a wow face on her pictures. And it's like trying to pull teeth with an old, broken set of pliers to get him to say something charming or lovely. I'd like to say I dealt with it like an adult who is grown and appropriate. No, I didn't. At the bar, I talked to him about it. He wouldn't say what she was. Whatever was going on, I called her. It was said that they are just friends. Which is why I asked his brother to take me home. His brother needed to close his tab first. Brad quickly leaves and goes home is able to delete all of her texts, contacts, and Facebook friends. He said sorry a lot, asked forgiveness, promised to be honest, etc. I trusted it. I sent the girl a message and told her I was sorry for making her feel bad. She told me that their relationship was only business-related and friendly, and she would be staying away from them from now on. Oh, I forgot to say that they work in different parts of the same building. He told me that all ties were broken. Now that it's been ten months, we're officially married. The last few weeks have been weird. We simply do not have sex. Even though I try to say no, he gets it maybe once or twice a month, and I never say no, because I don't know when I'll get it again. I do almost everything at home. I pay most of the bills, because I make more money than him, clean, do laundry, care for his daughter when we have her on the weekends, cook, make his food and coffee every day, etc. I plan all of our meals and pretty much everything else in our little family's life. Also, I work between 40 and 48 hours a week at a very hard job and get home two to three hours after him. He complains about having to walk the dogs, but when I get home it's all my job since I had the dogs before we were together. Not only did he pay for half of his daughter's quince, but he also planned it all. Yesterday was going to be his company's end-of-school year get-together at a bar and grill. I forgot to say that when we started dating again, he made it a rule that we wouldn't go to a bar without each other. I didn't mind since I don't go to bars very often. He didn't say he was going. Texting him when I leave work is how I let him know, because I have to drive home for 30 minutes. His usual drive safe message was changed to, okay my love see you soon. There's no one there when I get home. In response to my call, he tells me that he is with his brothers. He comes home totally drunk with slurred speech and a strong beer smell. He told her that his brother was off, so she went to hang out with him. He usually lets me know if he's going to stop somewhere, instead of going straight home. 
He spends as much time on Snapchat talking to his brother as he does with me, and he usually posts pictures of himself drinking with his brother on Snapchat, but nothing. Therefore, I call his brother because my gut is yelling. I asked his brother to help me find a picture of his dad with Brad so that I could help Brad's daughter with her Father's Day gift. He said he'd check when he got home, which is now 10 minutes ago. His usual hours are 3 to 11 p.m. That feeling tells me to look deeper. As the bill payer, I check our phone logs and pay the bill. Once we were done talking, he called his brother right away. What's the point of calling your brother right after you said you left his house? Which is why I asked him if he was there. Yes, definitely. You told me you were sure. Yes, definitely. I allowed it to go. When we go to sleep, he falls asleep right away because he is drunk, but I can't stop thinking about things and tossing and turning. Eventually, I chose to check his work phone. I felt compelled to look. I start to look. There is nothing fishy about the texts or calls. Then I chose to read his removed texts, which was a big bonus. One set of texts included the name of a guy from Grounds. Let's call him Bob. I read the letters. One came 20 minutes before he got off work and asked if they were going. That last bit from him. Requesting that he get home safely, be safe, have a good night, and that they talk again tomorrow with good night and I love you a lot in Spanish. The heart is beating fast and the hands are shaking. The phone number for Bob is written down from the ground up. My next step is to read his text. Two weeks after he stopped talking to her, he sent emails to Stacy saying hello and asking if they were going to eat in her room. I'm not sure what they mean. All I could find on his work phone was that. After thinking about it, I choose to look up Bob's phone number. Do you know who it turned out to be? Sticky. After that, I retrieve his personal phone and look it over. Checking his bank records is a great idea because you'll find nothing. He was meant to be at the bar or grill when $280 and was taken out of his wallet. Either he paid for everyone at work to get drinks, or they all went out to a nice dinner and drinks together. I don't know which one it is, I take a deeper breath. A lot of the time I brought him lunch, but he ate out. He ate lunch and dinner out while I was taking care of my property in my home state because I was out of town. Not at the price for one person, and he didn't say when he ate out any of these times. I'm looking through the bank records when he wakes up and asks me what I'm doing in the living room. Seeing how far your betrayal goes, I answer. What did he say? I told him again. He says no again when I tell him I know he wasn't with his boys today. To get around the question, he asks one himself. I tell him that I already know the truth and that I want him to tell the truth on his own. I told him I was leaving because he said no. Just putting together a quick bag with a few clothes, my dog's stuff, and a car with my dogs in it. Not to mention that I have one friend nearby and two sisters four hours away. It's also 1, 0 a.m. on a Wednesday or officially Thursday morning at this point. This is why I called his brother and asked to spend the night there. He gives me permission. He knows he's still talking to Stacy and that Brad called him and asked him to lie but he stays true and doesn't give me any more information. I don't press him because it's not his job, and I don't want to put him in the middle of things. A few beers with his brother later, it's 3.30 in the morning. Brad comes over and tells me to go home. No, I do not. Tell him he can stay with his brothers or at the apartment, but I won't stay with him. He gets up. I get about an hour of sleep. Now that he's probably gone to work, wake up load up the dogs again and go to the apartment. I packed some more of my things and things I needed, and I left at 7.30 this morning. I arrived at my sister's house by 11.30, and am now spending time with lovely people who will always be there for me and love me no matter what. Since I told him I was staying with my sister for the weekend, he hasn't called or texted me except to ask where I was going. Allow him some time to consider what he desires and choose whether to tell me the truth I am currently considering what I should do next, what I desire to do next, what steps to take, and how I appear I feel lost, hurt, misled, angry, ashamed, and all the other bad emotions. Now I'm feeling better than I was later. It will be four years since D-Day, and I always like to think about the skills and successes I have gained along the way. My Fordif, WH-40 Twom, 
suggested that we have an open relationship. Before I go any further, I want to say that I work full-time and have two kids with special needs who depend on me a lot. Although I wasn't feeling very good, I agreed. I was worn out from my stressful job, taking care of our kids' needs, keeping up with friends and being present in my marriage. I hardly had any time to think about what I really wanted. This past year, we went to a wedding out of town without our kids. I thought it was the best time to get back in touch and enjoy the short trip. What I didn't expect was to feel the loneliest I've ever been. We had sex just once the whole trip, and it felt like he wasn't into it. My WH didn't spend much time with me. He asked if one of the girls agreed that it would be okay for him and her to have sex since we were still free. I reluctantly agreed, which was a mistake on my part. The two of them did have sex. We didn't talk about it much during our first holiday because I thought it was bad, and he didn't want to talk too much about it since that's not how he usually talks to me after something. I tell him I felt lonely on the trip when we got back to real life, but he acts like I made it up. Right then and there, I told him I was ending the open marriage because I was no longer comfortable with it. By the end of that year, the girl is buying him presents for Christmas and his birthday. He told me that we were all friends now, and that was just something this girl does when she feels like it. Our bank record then shows that he bought her a Christmas present. He answered that he didn't want to be rude. Again, I told him I didn't feel safe, and he said there was nothing wrong because she lived more than 1,000 miles away. And then the pandemic happened, which made my mental health worse than hell. I was home with my kids since daycare and school were closed. I work from home too but I put in about 80 hours a week and had to help kids with their homework, clean the house, and make all the meals. My husband's show was doing really well at this point, and he was gone to the studio most nights after work, in addition to his normal 9-to-5 schedule. I mean it when I say that someone who cheats will get caught in the end. Nobody can hide the truth for too long. It will eventually come out. Long story short, I finally went through his old phone and found texts from two years ago between my WH and the girl. They both sent each other a lot of I love you and I miss you letters and made plans to meet up and have hidden dinners. They also planned a trip for the boys down south near where she lived. In this part of D week, when things only get worse, I also learned that we were meeting another girl from the podcast who snuck into his direct messages at a strange hotel that she paid for. They were both talking about their meetups upstairs and making plans for them. Also, I found texts between him and his friends in which he bragged to them, and they praised him. He also complained to this girl and his friends that he didn't want to try with me anymore. At that point, I didn't know who the second chick was and was looking into her. It turned out that my WH friends knew I was interested in this other girl. So he called me and said we needed to talk when he got home that night. At that moment, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over my body. It was my nerves trying to keep me safe. I warned myself not to make hasty choices, because whatever I chose would have an effect on my children as well. It was settled. I broke down in tears and told him how ashamed and degraded I felt, and how he had totally disrespected me. I also told him that he had ruined our marriage and any trust or respect I had for him. I told him that I wasn't in a hurry to make a choice about our relationship because, unlike him, I think about how my choices affect other people. I informed him that I need some time to feel better before making a choice. Once I was cool, I told him to call both of these women while I was there and use the speakerphone to tell them that whatever was going on would not continue. The first person he called was his long-distance girlfriend. He told her they were breaking up and that he was stopping her from all social media and calling her. He also told her he was lying and cheating, which is exactly what I told him to say. He then does the same thing to the hotel chick when he calls her. That made it even better that the hotel chick was at a dinner with her husband to celebrate their anniversary. I loved that for both of them. Still looking through his phone that week, I found yet another girl he cheated on her with. Don't forget that I ended the open marriage two years before D-Week. While he was at work, I called him because those D-papers were in my head getting ready to be printed. If I asked him if there were any other women besides the two I knew about, he told me about the third one, and said that they had only met once that year. I felt nothing at this point. I no longer knew what to do. I shut myself off from everything going on around me, 
and kept to myself. My only thoughts were on my job and my kids at this point. My sleep and food were both very limited. I quit talking to everyone on social media and the phone. I barely wanted to hear my WH voice. All I could do was listen to music. The first time I talked to my husband was later that same week, and I made him go to the doctor with me to get an STD test. The look on his face showed that he was impressed. He didn't even seem to think about that, and he not only hurt my mental health, but he also put my physical health at risk. He was so happy when the results came back negative, but I felt nothing. I appreciate you reading all of this. Our marriage has been going strong for almost 20 years, and we are still together. I am in IC, and things have been going well. Hi, everyone. Even though I don't use Reddit very often, I'm looking for a place to share my story because I felt completely alone while my ex husband cheated on me with his co worker. First, I'll talk about how we met to give you a sense of our love story. 2010 to 2013 for four years, I didn't leave my house. My fear was agoraphobia. I was terribly nervous, and in the end I had to stay home because of it. I had a hard time getting out of bed, brushing my teeth, taking showers, etc. for the first few years. Now let's talk about the last year I spent being afraid of public speaking. My ex-husband sent me a friend request on Facebook. I wasn't sure if I knew him or not because I hadn't left the house, so I sent him a message asking if I knew him. He said that I didn't, but that he had seen my biography on the page of another common friend and liked it a lot. I told him right away what was going on in my life, and that I was only looking for friends because of it. He recognized it, and over a few months we became friends, online friends of course. Then things started to get romantic. He finally agreed to meet me at my house, which was risky, I know. Love can make you do crazy things, and we did. He came over all the time while he was still stuck at my house, and we started to feel something for each other. Over time he'd ask me to go on dates, but I'd say no, because I couldn't leave the house and thought it was silly and crazy of him to want to go on dates with me when I couldn't. I told him he could ask me out again if he was still there when I got better. I worked really hard to get out of the house after not going for a year. We would walk to the mailbox, down the street, and to the hospital together. It was less than a mile from my house to his place of work. I finally started to understand more about places, and I got better. At some point, my dad told me that I needed to get better if I wanted to marry this guy. After that, we went on dates and then got engaged. Our wedding was like something out of a fairy tale. When I couldn't leave the house, my ex-boyfriend would call me Rapunzel because she couldn't leave her tower. Okay, writing this out doesn't sound very romantic. Anyhow, he proposed to me by leaving puzzle pieces of us in the places we usually went on dates with clues that led us to the lake, where we got in a canoe like in the movie Tangled and our families were waiting on the bridge. Loved it, and then real life started. During our marriage, I felt very unsafe because my ex-spouse didn't have any mental health problems like I did. I had a hard time moving at times, and I couldn't do normal things like most people, like driving 45 minutes to a town to hang out. This made me sad. Everyone I knew loved my ex and thought he was divine. They always asked him, why would you ever be with someone like her? I really struggled during the marriage. It was my fault that I brought up divorce a few times during our marriage. I know that was the last straw for me. But my anxiety and depression got the best of me, and I would always tell him to find someone who didn't struggle like I did because it was too much. He would say no, saying that he wanted to spend his whole life with me and get old with me. Now it's October 2024. I spent a lot of time at school this year because it was my first year teaching and it was very stressful. I saw my ex change a lot. We fought a lot because he drank to get drunk. Even when I used the D word, we didn't fight very often. But we had a lot of fights. We became friends with a group of young people. They were in their mid-twenties, and we were in our mid-thirties. Every weekend, we got together. And I noticed that my husband always wanted to hang out with them and never wanted to be by himself with me. This group is made up of gym goers. We always hung out with them. They came to our house in October 2024 because my husband worked with them. We had game night at our house every weekend, and she wanted to come because she thought it would be fun. Of course, we told them to come over. She's rude, loud, 
and just plain annoying. She then told us stories about how she got really drunk, hit her husband, and threw up on his DCK. In any case, she got drunk and loud, and her husband seemed very mad at her at the time. I found out that her husband had filed for divorce and told her he didn't love her any more weeks after we hung out. As the savior that he is, my ex-husband would comfort her and ask her to her house, the gym, and other places, which she did. I found times when she was off over time. My ex called him one night as she was getting ready to go to work to say that the bathroom door in her apartment was locked from the inside and she needed him to fix it. I told him he couldn't go over there by himself, so he brought his friend, whom he told me had a crush on her and vice versa. When my ex's grandmother de Ed, she came to the funeral even though she had never met her. She brought a sympathy basket worth several hundred dollars to the house, which I thought was weird since she was going through a divorce herself. There was a time when we had pictures of us and family in our fridge. She saw it and went to her car to get one of her graduation invitations to put on our fridge. Needless to say, I noticed these things and became very suspicious of everything. My ex was very detached in the weeks before I found out. We hadn't had sex in three months and didn't talk to each other much. I even started therapy because I knew our marriage was in trouble. My ex and this girl told her friend, the guy she likes, that they were in love with each other. He liked her. Because their friend wouldn't let this go on any longer, they did it so that they would have to answer for it. So that night, he told me when he got home that he had really thought about this girl. It broke my heart. The girls in the group made me feel better and let me stay with them while I waited. They even helped me get my things during this time. When I learned that they had been personal and said they loved each other, I ended up in a mental hospital. I went there for a week and then came back. Finally, our group of friends said they wouldn't pick between us two and would accept both of us, so my ex and this girl. My whole world fell apart, and they're still together after all this. I'm really sad and don't know how to handle everything. I can't help but think that he was unhappy being married to me because of my anxiety and sadness, which is what made him leave me for another woman. I can't help but think about how glad he is that I'm not stopping him and how she can do everything I couldn't do for him. Seeing them happy makes me sad, and I know I shouldn't think about that, but I can't help it. Actually, I think my ex-boyfriend held me back too, since he never really pushed me and just liked me the way I was. Because of this, my anxiety is a lot better now than it was before. I flew by myself for the first time, and I can even go to a place 45 minutes away, which is where I saw them together for the first time. I'm just worried about everything and hate the thought that someone else is giving him what I couldn't. I also hate that they are happy and that everyone loves them together. 